guys i'm going to make a video because i just saw something on youtube that is very uh, concerning and i think a lot of i guess doctors or pastors or preachers always try to get people to believe that the sabbath is not important so let me work, let me go real quick and we're going to look at it um very soon let's see what we are, we got today we don't follow the Ten Commandments because of, they're the Ten Commandments, because the Ten Commandments were given to Israel. But we do follow most of the Ten Commandments because they're repeated in the New Testament. You see, everything from Exodus 20 through the end of Deuteronomy is a law that was written to Israel. However, there are many laws written to Israel that are also laws for us today. And when they, when they are universal laws, they're repeated in the New Testament. And nine out of the ten commandments are repeated in the new testament as binding on christians the only one is keep holy the sabbath because what did the sabbath represent the sabbath represented rest and who is our rest jesus is our rest in other words the sabbath has already arrived the reason we we don't have to obey the sabbath strictly speaking is because the sabbath has arrived jesus has arrived we don't work to earn salvation christ has earned salvation and so we rest in him. There's a lot to unpack. And so this video, I'm going to cut it into like multiple segments. So you guys can actually have a full understanding of what basically he is saying, if he is right and if he is wrong. Let's go back and start again. Don't follow the Ten Commandments because they're the Ten Commandments. Because the Ten Commandments were given to Israel. But we do follow most of the Ten Commandments because they're repeated in the New Testament. Okay, so here's the thing. He said we don't follow the Ten Commandments because they're the Ten Commandments. The reason why we don't follow the Ten, the, the Ten Commandments is because they were given to Israel. Now, um, first thing first. What does what does Israel mean? What does Israel mean? When God gives the Ten, the Ten Commandments to Israel, does he only give it to them as of people that were born within the borders of Israel? Yes. Now, here's the funny part. Why did God give the Ten Commandments to the people that were born within the borders of Israel? It's because God wanted to use a nation to show to the whole world his light. God's purpose is not that the Ten Commandments should stay in Israel, but that the Ten Commandments should be preached into all the world so that everyone can, can know who the God of Israel is. Now, the God of Israel is also the God of the whole world and the whole universe. The Ten Commandments is basically what we call the law for dummies. God had to spell out what it means by love. I don't think there's a Ten Commandments in heaven, but God had to spell out what love is because we don't know what love is. So he gave us Ten Commandments. But basically, he gave two commandments. Love God, love your neighbors. If you love God, you're going to keep the first four commandments. If you love your neighbors, you're going to keep the last six. It's pretty simple. Now, what does Israel mean? Let me read for you guys. Genesis chapter 32. Anytime you want to know something for the first time, you go back to Genesis chapter 32. From verses 22 all the way to verse, uh, I would say, 29. And it says this. And, and he rose that night and took his two wives and his two women servants, that's Jacob, and his eleven sons, and passed over the ford Jabok, Jabok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And Jacob was left alone, and he and there wrestled the men with him until the break of the day. And when he, meaning the men, wrestling, wrestling with Jacob, so that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, 
the man said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And Jacob said, I will not, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? Quite funny. What? Why would? Okay, first of all. And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. Funny. Jesus, in a sense, God, wrestled with Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, Jesus asked Jacob for his name, and Jacob said, My name is Jacob. And Jesus said, No, actually, now from now on, your name is called Israel, which means, you, As a prince, hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. That means he wrestled with God and he prevailed. That's why we have that term called the word Israel means what? That's the first question for the for the people that are saying, Well, the thing comes from giving only to the Israel to Israel. Well, what does Israel mean? That's the first thing. They never look at what Israel actually means. Israel means God contended, wrestled with God, or we wrestled with God and we became triumphant. Meaning Israel actually means overcomers with God. You are triumphant with God. So and 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 and, and here's the other here's the kicker. Israel, to those who don't know, even to him, even to even to him, oh, even to him, Israel is not a given name. People make that people make that 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 that, that, that mistake. Israel is not a given name. Israel is not a given name. Why? Because what does the name mean in the Bible? A name means your character. When Moses asked God in Exodus chapter 33, I believe, or 34, God, show me your glory. God said, I will proclaim my name, the Lord, the Lord God, um, forgiving the sins and all that, and merciful and patient, forgiving the sins of, of the fathers and all that, but by no means will leave the guiltless, the guilt, the guilt, the guilty, guiltless, and all that. What? Why did God not just say, He's my glory? Why did He proclaim His name? Well, you know, your name means something. It's your character. When people, <laughs> that's why people, when you give people a name, make sure you know what the name means. Like, Moses means something. Joseph means something. Joshua means something. So, Israel means something. When God gave the the Sabbath, the Ten Commandment, to the Israelites, He didn't give it so that they can keep it to themselves. He gave it so that they can give it to everybody else. How do I know that? Well, in Isaiah chapter 56, the Bible says, Thus says the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Lord. So, when he when he is talking about, well, we don't keep the Ten Commandments because it was going to be well. Basically, what he's saying is, we have not joined ourselves to the Lord. Now, he might be sincere in what he's doing, what, what, what he's saying, believing that it's true, but he is wrong. Yes, you gotta say it. Because he says, neither let the stranger that. Neither, neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speaking. He didn't. God didn't say neither let the the son of the stranger that has joined himself to Israel. He didn't say that. He said to the Lord. So the moment you decide to to join yourself to the Lord, you 
have to abide by the laws of the Lord. I mean, okay, let's let's keep on going. Stick speaks saying, the Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, I am a dry tree. And da 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 da. And you can read the rest of the of the chapter. Actually, let me just read some more. For thus said the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath, plural, and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than the son of the daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him, to love the name of the Lord, to be his servant, and everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Nothing here talks about Israel. Nothing. Why? Because, because God gave the Ten Commandments to Israel not so for them, but for them to give it to the whole world as a light. That's what Jesus said to us. We are the light of the world. The the Israelites, the people that were born within the birth of Israel, Israel of Israel, were supposed to be the light of the world, so that everyone could come in. Now, okay, let me give you another one. Um, we know that in James chapter two, Bible talks about. The law of liberty. I wonder which law that is. If ye fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to per of to persons, ye commit sin, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whoso whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said do not commit adultery also said do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery and yet thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. Spirit so speak ye, as and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Now, here's the funny part. You see here John gives no reference to the first four commandments. Why? The reason is because Everybody knew that. It's like us trying to make a rule that says, well, you need to actually um, recite the allegiance to the to the flag of the United States. Like, that's redundant. Everybody knows that. When you're in school, everybody knows you have to do what? You have to recite the allegiance to the U.S. flag. Well, oh, now, hold on. Now, hold on. Let's actually um, see what else, because in um, in in chapter fourteen of Revelation, Bible says, "Here is the patience of the saints. And here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus." Um, <laughs> hmm. You know what? Let's just keep on moving. Because I want, I don't want to take too long. Let's keep on moving with that, with that one. Let's see what else he has to say. Let's see what else. You see, everything from Exodus twenty through the end of Deuteronomy mm -hmm. is a law that was written to Israel. However, there are many laws written to Israel that are also laws for us today. And when they when they are universal laws, they're repeated in the New Testament. And nine out of the ten commandments are repeated in the New Testament. As binding on Christians, the only one is keep holy the Sabbath. Because what did the Sabbath represent? The Sabbath represented rest. Okay. And who is our rest? Jesus is our rest. Okay. Um, I have a question for you. See, the Bible, in the Bible, it talks about, Jesus, Paul mentions that Jesus is our what? Our Paschal, or meaning or our, what we call now with that pagan name, Easter. But why do we still keep Easter? The, in the Bible, the Bible says that Jesus is our Passover. Right? Yeah, Jesus is our Passover. But for some reason, 
we the people still celebrate Easter. I wonder why. Why? Are you going to say, well, it is to remember the life and death of Jesus Christ? Well, shouldn't you also celebrate the Sabbath for because God created the world in six days and he rested on the seventh day, therefore he blessed that day and hallowed it? You see, I believe people like him, people like him, uh, are probably God, one of God's most useful instruments to bring the truth to people because they got a big followers. And I'm pretty sure he actually does love God and does want to do what is right. But on this point, he is wrong. On this point, he is wrong. Yes, on this point, he is wrong. He might love God so much, but on this point, he is definitely leading people astray. I'm just going to call it like that. To say that the Ten Commandments, only nine were actually mentioned in the New Testament, I would say, huh, if you're looking at it from word for word, sure. Word for word, sure. If it's not mentioned word for word, then what do we also do? Because in the Bible, it doesn't talk about you cannot smoke cigarette. But when you study out the Bible, you're going to find out what smoking is. God is against smoking because we study it out. But instead of studying out that part, they just say, well, because we are in the New Testament, we don't need to keep the Ten Commandments. This is a false statement. Let me explain why. Back in those days, in the time of Jesus Christ, when the, in the Sabbath day, even if you grab a stick, that was enough for them to bring you to judgment quickly. Because they wanted to do everything they could not to break the Sabbath. Why would Jesus mention to the young ruler to keep the Sabbath? That's basically like common sense over there. That was common sense. It's, a, it's as though, what's the better? It's as though you're saying, oh yeah, in, in Texas, in Texas, you probably should mostly be a Republican. Well, it's not, or, you know, when you're doing um, the G GOP, whatever, in Texas is red. It's actually, well, in Texas, in Texas, it's going to be red. It's like, we already know that. Why would you fight? Why would you mention that this is going to be red? We already know it's going to be red. Right? So the ten, the Sabbath, in basically, it was already given that you could break. Basically, in in that time of the of Jesus Christ, basically, you could break any commandment except the Sabbath. Yeah, you people, even the Pharisees, they had other God before God themselves. They did not take God's name in they took God's name in vain because they wanted to act like a godly person but then live like the devil. They didn't care about their neighbors. So they the only commitment that they didn't want to break was the Sabbath. But for some reason today, the only commitment people want to break is the Sabbath. I'm like, what? So Jesus didn't mention the Sabbath. Why? Because everybody knew you cannot break the Sabbath. Everybody knew if you break the Sabbath, it basically is like the death penalty. So why would Jesus tell him to keep the Sabbath holy? Jesus already knew they're going to keep the Sabbath, but Jesus already knows that most of them are not going to have uh, are, are going to have other gods before God. He also know they're gonna they're gonna be bowing down to graven images, which they have done in the past. 
If you look at in Ezekiel chapter 8 and chapter 9, where the people in the, in the sanctuary, they bow down to graven images, to the sun on the rising from the east, they take God's name in vain, they don't take care of their parents, they kill, they lie, they cheat, they cover, they do all of that, but keeping but the Sabbath. So of course Jesus wouldn't need to mention the Sabbath. Why? Because that's the only law that they know if they break it's a death penalty, basically. So he tells them, You know what the commandment says, love your father and your mother and you shall not you shall not cheat cheat, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal shall not he, he said all the all the nine except the last one, the tenth commandment, which is the which the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath. Why? Because he knows that this one, they are not going to break it. But mm, let's see what else he has to say. In other words, the Sabbath has already arrived. Uh, the reason we we don't have to obey the Sabbath, strictly speaking, is because the Sabbath has arrived. Jesus has arrived. We don't work. To earn salvation, Christ has earned salvation, and so we rest in Him. Man, he couldn't be more wrong. He couldn't be more wrong. The Sabbath has arrived. The Sabbath has arrived. Wow! Didn't God say that He's? Didn't God say in Malachi chapter four that He is God and He does not change? So how could the the law change? You see, the the law of liberty is the Ten Commandments. It's not the ceremonial law. The ceremonial law were were, were, were were actually a representation of Jesus Christ coming to save us from our sin. Not the Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments are only there for us to see where we are falling short and and that we need a savior. So if we don't need the Ten Commandments, how we don't, how are we gonna know? Oh if we if we only keep actually like, like they say, if you keep all the Ten Commandments and you offer only one, you basically broke all ten. So how would you know if it's okay to just break any of them? Now <laughs> Here's how I'm going to end this. I want people to understand, number one, what Israel means. And number two, in Romans chapter, I believe chapter 11, chapter 12, it talks about being grafted into the tree. If it is only given into the Israelites, but now we are grafted into the tree, which is basically Israel, because if we take the name of we are for Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then that means we are okay with being part of the tree. Would it not, would it not also mean we, are, we, are, we should be okay with keeping the same laws and the same rules that the tree actually has? I kind of hope people like him um, would actually study and find out the truth about the Sabbath and not just made up stuff. All right? So, Jesus is our Sabbath, so we don't need to keep the Sabbath. But also, Jesus is our Passover. So why do we keep the Passover? Why do we still celebrate Easter? We shouldn't be celebrating Easter. Well, they call it Easter, which is the pagan name for Easter, which is a goddess, a pagan goddess. But if Jesus is our Passover, why do we still celebrate Easter? Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop it right here because I'm not going to make it too long. So, if you like the video, and if you actually have questions about that, you can send it in the comment section below because I will gladly um, make another video to give you in-depth details about this 
um, issue, which is the Sabbath. Until then, it was the open-world CV. Food for thought.